everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, and in this episode, I'm going to show you something that will allow you to create custom content for your Instagram feed, and you can add branding, you can add calls to action, and you can do all of this using a feature that's been in Lightroom since it was very first released. It's in the print module of all things. Who knew? It's called the print to file. Now using this, you can not only take a bunch of images and put them together to make collages or trip ticks or whatever, you can also add branding or you can add calls to action like swipe up or click here for more info or don't miss this or coming soon. Whatever it is, you can do that all within Lightroom and then add that to Instagram stories and that will allow people to discover your content. So without further ado, let's hop into Lightroom and get started. I'm in the library module of Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic CC and before we jump over into the print module, I just need to mention the fact that the print module only allows you to work with images that are either currently selected or those that are in collections. And so if you don't have any images in collections, make sure you do that first so you can work with them properly in the print module. Or when you get over there, you might not be able to find the images that you want. All right, I've got the images that I want in a bike collection. These are my motorcycle images from a ride around the world. And so let's just zip over to the print module now. Remember, the print module is for printing physical prints on physical pieces of paper from a physical printer. We're going to be using it in a way that it was never intended. We're going to print to a JPEG image and use that image on Instagram stories. And so if you don't know a lot about the print module, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to use eight steps to do exactly what you need to do. So just follow along, you'll be just fine. Let's get to it by step one. Step one is to choose the correct layout style. We need to choose a custom package. And once you select this, you're going to see a blank screen, something like this. This represents that piece of paper that we'd be coming out of a printer, but we're going to be printing to a JPEG file. And so what we need to do is we need to create a, a virtual piece of paper that matches an Instagram story, tall and skinny. And uh, so we're going to do that in step two. In step two, we're going to click on page setup. And we are going to format this for any printer. And so you might see a, a different printer here. Just click any printer. And then in paper size, click manage custom sizes. Now, once we get in here, click the plus button. We want to create a preset. And then double click on untitled. We are going to call this Instagram story. All right. So just type that in there, Instagram story. And then for paper size, make sure you... Uh, enter nine inches wide and 16 inches tall. And then in the non-printable area for top, bottom, left and right, make sure you enter all zeros. So once you've done that, you're all set up and then you can click OK. And now from now on, you don't have to add any of that stuff. You can just go down here and click Instagram story. And when you hit OK, you're going to get this tall and skinny uh, document that will work every time. So you only have to do step two the first time. Let's get to step three, and that is adding our images to our blank slate. Now to do that, all we have to do is go down here into the film strip, and then we can drag images onto the page. Now the thing about this is when you drag an image onto the page, you're not actually adding just an image, you're adding a cell. Now a cell is a placeholder that you can put images in in the future. And so this square here, notice if I drag this to the left, it becomes tall and skinny. Drag it to the right, it becomes sort of skinny and wide. And it's cropping off things because it's creating a frame that contains an image. Now I can hit the command or option and then I can drag my image inside of that. And it's similar to the way frames work in InDesign, if you're familiar with that. The other thing I can do, if I don't want my image to be resized in a weird and wonky way, I can always go to the right side here and click Lock to Photo Aspect Ratio. And then no matter what I do, it's always going to keep the aspect ratio. I'm gonna turn that off for now. And so I'll show you why a little bit later. So I have my first image here. If I don't like that image, and I wanna replace it with something, I can go down here to the film strip and then I can just drag and drop one on top of that. It's gonna replace what is inside of that cell. Remember that cell is a placeholder. I can go over here, I can get this Anthony Churchyard image and I can 
drag and drop that in. So if I drop on top of the cell, whatever's inside of that cell is going to be replaced. If I want to add another image, I need to drag and make sure I drop it somewhere on a blank area of my page. And then I can resize that and I can add it on top. I can start layering these things and putting them anywhere I want inside of this virtual piece of paper. And so I can be dragging and dropping and doing all kinds of cool things. Now the other thing that we can do here, instead of doing it this way, I'm going to clear my layout. I'm going to get rid of everything. On this uh, add to package under the cells area, we have predefined aspect ratio. So a four by six, a five by seven, three by seven. If you click on the triangle, you'll see what these are. And you can even click edit to create your own sizes, which is pretty cool. And so over here, I've created my own size and click edit on that. And this is a size that you might want to enter yourself. It's five dot triple three by nine inches. And so you might want to add that by entering those sizes exactly and hitting add. And then what you can do is you can add one, two, and three. Now we have three blank cells. And then what I can do is I can go in here and I can drag and drop an image in that one, drag and drop an image in that one, and I'm getting a triptych, which is pretty cool. And so if I don't like that, maybe I want uh, this image of me out in Mongolia up here. I can put that in there. I've got this placeholder that I can uh, use over and over and over again. Three blank placeholders that I can use. The other thing I can do is I can get rid of one of these. I'm going to hit delete. And then the background will show up, this uh, blank space, which is cool because in Instagram, you might want to add some text, something like remembering my trip to Mongolia, something like that. If you want this to be a specific color, on the right hand side, you can create a, a page background color and that can be white or black or green or blue or whatever you want it to be. And this just can be a blank area that once you throw this into Instagram, from Instagram, you can add some text. So if you want to have a blank area, it can be black or white or any color that you want. And that's really groovy. And so what I'm going to do here is I am going to add in another uh, cell here. So let me just do that. And then I'm going to add in another image into that cell. So we have a triptych. It looks pretty cool. I want to add some a call to action to this, or I might want to add some branding. And so now what we're going to do is once we have our setup exactly like we like it, we've got our images sort of arranged here, we are going to add an identity plate. So that's step five. You can only add one identity plate. Now, an identity plate is normally what you would use for your branding. And so notice my identity, plate, my identity plate is Mark on a bike. I can add that here, but you can also add custom identity plates. And so instead of just using the standard identity plate, I can click this triangle right here. Instead of using my main identity plate, I can click edit and I can use some text. So I can say something like read, let me make this black. So I'll click on this, make that black. I can say, read my blog. And then I can change the text. So I'll use Vox round instead. I need to highlight this and then say, use Vox round. That's okay. So now I've got something that I want to say here. And so I can add text right within Lightroom if I want, or I can leave a blank area and add that in Instagram later when I'm adding it to my story. The other thing I can do is I can add graphics. So I can add any kind of transparent PNG file. So to do that, again, go to the identity plate, click edit, and I will use a graphical identity plate. So I've already set up a couple of these. So I'm going to go over here to my finder. I've got a little, just a simple graphic, a transparent PNG file that I made. It's not very good, but it says swipe up graphic. If I click on that, notice now, and I can resize this. I've got this thing that says swipe up. Now I could make this really fancy. I could make it white or black or blue or multiple colors, whatever I want. As long as it's a transparent PNG file, I can put it anywhere I want on the screen. I can even rotate this so I can rotate it upside down, right side up, whatever I want to do. And so it works just like a normal identity plate, which is really cool. So I can add a call to action right within Lightroom itself. All right, so now that we have that, 
what we can do is we can save a preset, something that we, a template that we can use over and over again so we don't have to create these files. So over here on the template browser, if you hit the plus right here on the plus button, then you can title this whatever you want. And so I'm gonna say, this is my three up uh, template or you can call it your triptych or whatever you want to call it. And when I say create, so now anytime I come back here, let's say I've got some other template that I've created. I want to go back to that three up template that I created. Well, guess what? There it is with my identity plate. Now all I have to do is drag and drop in my images and it's all set. So if you have something that you've set up very, very fancy, a bunch of images overlapping, whatever, with this certain identity plate, you only have to create it one time save it as a template and you can use it over and over and over again. All right, now here is the trick. We're gonna go to step seven and that is to print this to a JPEG file. And so what we want to do is to change the section over here where it says print job. So normally you're printing to a printer. We are going to be printing to a JPEG file. Now this has been around since the very beginning of Lightroom. It allows you to create these custom page setups and templates and everything and then print them and send them through email. But we're gonna use this for Instagram instead. The trick here is to make sure that you have these settings exactly as I've shown you here. The file resolution, 300 PPI, that's gonna be really high resolution. I sharpen mine a standard amount for a glossy page because a screen is a glossy page. I choose an 80% JPEG quality. And then the profile that you should use here is an sRGB color profile with a perceptual intent. So again, if you want to take notes, just pause the video, write this stuff down. You're only going to be using those settings over and over and over again. All right, now that that is set up, all we need to do is click print to file. It's going to ask you where you want to print this. So I've got this little temporary folder that I've set up and I'm going to add this and call it bikes in Mongolia. It's only one bike, but you know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to save that. And then once that is finished, I can show you what the uh, file looks like. So that's done. If we zip over to the finder, I can go over and preview this. You can see here is our JPEG image and it's one image that looks exactly like what we set up in Lightroom. The next thing we need to do is get this over into our mobile device. So use AirDrop or email it or however you need to get that over to your mobile device. Unfortunately, Instagram doesn't let us do anything from our desktop when it comes to Instagram stories. So we have to get this to our mobile device. So I'm gonna let you choose the way that you want to do that. But the next thing we need to do is zip over to Instagram. So let's do that next. Once you're in Instagram, you can go into your Instagram story and choose one of the images that you've saved to your device. And so here's one that I just created here, the swipe up with this stuff. Notice I've created an empty spot on the front. And so I can click some text and I'll say, uh, beautiful Mongolia. There we go and I'll make sure that's black. And then that little space that I created there makes a lot of sense. So you can save spaces along your stuff um, or I can discard that. You can see one that I created uh, right here that was a couple of weeks ago. So using trash as a light modifier, I can then go in and say, watch this now. Something like that and again, once I have that in there, I can change whatever effect. Now in Adorama TV, I can add some mentions. I'll add Adorama, etc. And so then I can add a call to action, whatever I wanna do. And you can see how easy it is to create some really interesting Instagram stories to drive content to your site. Well, I hope that you found this technique useful. And as you can see, it's sort of unlimited. It's up to your imagination how you put those images together and the branding or the calls to action that you add using the identity plates. So just dive in and play with it and see what you can do on your Instagram stories. I use this in my Instagram stories to help people see some of the videos that I've created for Adorama TV. And so as people ask me questions about photography, if there's enough of them, I'll throw out a photo tip on my Instagram story and link to that using a call to action. And so people can discover more photo tips from Adorama TV. So if you're not following me on Instagram, do that because you're missing out on some goodness. And of course, make sure you subscribe to Adorama TV. It's free. Why not? And also turn on the bell so you don't miss a single episode. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again next time.